What's up everyone? Today we're going to take a look at the Dell Inspiron 15 5505 laptop, also known as the Magical Disappearing Computer. I've thrown together a few videos already talking about the disappearance of this computer from the internet, and you can check it out on my channel, but today we're not talking about why you might not be able to find it now or possibly ever again, but instead we're actually going to find out if it's even worth having in the first place. So we're going to start off with the specs of the machine. The computer comes with a Ryzen 7 4700U 8-core processor, a Vega 10 graphics integrated GPU, 8 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 MHz RAM, 256 gigabyte NVMe SSD, and a 15.6 inch 1080p display. So how about the ports? On the left side, the Inspiron comes with the charging port, an HDMI 1.4B out, USB Gen 3.2, Type A port, but the USB C port allows for display port out, meaning 4K at 60 frames per second, as well as power delivery and data transfer speeds up to 5 gigabits per second. On the right side, we find an 8th inch headphone slash microphone combo, another USB Type A port, and a micro SD card slot. Overall, the I.O. is serviceable, if nothing special. Let's move on to the user experience. The biggest question that I had uh, and that I've seen on the internet is, what's the screen look like? Is it any good? What's, is it bright? What's the color accuracy like? Well, I can say that it's serviceable. Is it the best display I've seen? Uh, certainly not. However, it has deep inky blacks, get bright enough to see just fine in a brightly lit office space. And the colors are fine, though I would recommend an external monitor uh, for photo and video editing. To be honest, the screen was far better than I was expecting. I've used many laptops in this price range and the screen was so awful I hated using it on a day-to-day -day basis. Not so with this one. Crisp, bright, deep black levels, good contrast. For a work school laptop that doesn't require color critical work, I would have no issue recommending it. The slim bezels look nice and overall I enjoy using the screen. The speakers inside the machine, eh, they're average, but again serviceable. Nothing offensive and loud enough to fill a bedroom. Obviously, headphones or a Bluetooth speaker are preferable. Extra life acquired. One of the biggest reservations with this laptop that I had was the lack of a dedicated graphics card, such as the AMD 56 or 5500M. However, the Vega 10 graphics are no slouch. Future PC part noob coming to you, and real quick correction. This is not a Vega 10 GPU, it is a Vega 7 GPU, even though Dell's specification sheet said 10. So just wanna point that out to you, uh, don't know why. While I wouldn't recommend it as a gaming notebook, older games, such as Doom, have no problem running at 1080p medium settings. And the 3D Mark score, while not amazing, is exceptional for an integrated GPU. Speaking of power, the processor in this laptop is nothing short of amazing. To get the best performance, you'll need to pop another stick of DDR4 3200 RAM in there, which isn't hard or expensive. Without dual channel memory, the computer runs well for single threaded and decent for multi threaded workloads. With a second stick, though, we see the performance rise by a negligible 1.8% in single threaded workloads, but a massive 28.6% and multi-threaded workloads in the Geekbench 5 benchmark. Even with a powerful processor, the 15-watt chip doesn't take a lot of heat and doesn't use a lot of power. The computer was barely above ambient temperatures most of the time I used it, and the fan kicked up when I was doing more intensive workloads, but it wasn't too loud. The computer ships with a 256GB SK Hynix NVMe SSD, and it's snappy and performs well for day-to-day -day tasks. There's another spot for a second uh, M.2 NVMe SSD. Unfortunately, it seems Dell has been shipping without the needed hardware to install it. If you got the hardware with your order, drop a comment below. I have tons of computer hardware laying around my house, so I was able to install it with a little bit of work, but it's unfortunate Dell didn't include it with my machine. The typing experience was a little off-putting at first. Coming from a Surface Book 2 that has a phenomenal keyboard, it, it just didn't seem like it quite measured up. But the more I've typed on it, such as for school and for work, and even typing this review, the more I've come to appreciate it. The keys are a little mushy, but not where it hindered my typing ability. 
I love some clicky keys for gaming and editing, but these are quiet and suited to a workplace or library. For that type of environment, which is where I use this laptop mostly, I would highly recommend it. There's certainly some deck flex, but the key stability isn't bad. However, the keyboard backlight is all but useless because of the white light on a silver keyboard. It is there in case it's needed. The trackpad is large, uses window precision drivers, and has a nice click to it. Speaking of the keyboard, the power button slash fingerprint reader is located at the top right of it. It works fine as a power button, but I struggled when I first registered my fingerprint. However, I found it was far more accurate if you register your fingerprint twice. I rarely had an issue with Windows Hello since I did that. The finish of the computer is metal on the top and plastic inside. It's good and doesn't seem prone to fingerprints. Nothing to complain about there. The webcam is, mm, well, it's garbage. Checking out the webcam on this Dell Inspiron 505505. But let's be honest, most webcams on computers these days aren't great. It's more of an afterthought. It is a plus that it's at least included. Finally, battery life is good, but not great. Running at 75% brightness with video playback and the computer set to better performance, it averaged around nine hours per charge. Dropping the performance slider down a little bit will net you more time with going down to battery saver, getting you about 12 hours of battery life, which is pretty good. So the question comes down to, would I recommend this computer? The answer is, if you're looking for a machine for school or for work, can do a little bit of gaming, can do some video editing, uh, has a great processor, and is a solid machine for the price, and I paid just a little bit over $700 for it, I would say absolutely. It is totally worth getting. The Ryzen 7 4700U uh, processor stomps Intel's processors, so it's phenomenal in that way. The iGPU inside of this thing is impressive. Again, being able to play some games such as Doom, which is from 2016, but still really good looking title, really fun title. Uh, it's pretty impressive. The rest of the machine works as intended and doesn't get in the way of the user experience. This computer earns a thumbs up from me. And if this video earned a thumbs up from you, then hit that like button down below. If you like the channel and you want to see more videos like this, then please hit subscribe. Until next time, PC Park Noob out.